let's look at this set in an online game smart cricket life two players can simultaneously two players can play simultaneously both of them bat for three overs of six balls each on the respective screen simultaneously they can score the runs in the form of ones twos threes fours and sixes so you only score in one two three four or six no other form of scoring if a player misses a ball there are two possibilities either the ball hits the wicket or not if the ball hits the wicket then there is a penalty of five runs essentially if you get out you have there is a penalty of five runs that is five runs are deducted from the total runs if the ball does not hit the wicket zero runs are scored okay there are no catching fielders except a bowler and a player who is batting so there are just two players player one player two given below is some partial data about the three overs faced by the two players namely player one and player two p1 p2 so in over one ball one player one had scored one run player two scored three runs so on and so forth we have partial data available and then we have some additional input provided using which we have to hopefully fill this up let's see in the third over player one has scored more runs than player two player one has scored more runs than player two okay Player two has hit a six in the last ball of the second over. Player two has hit a six on the last ball. Okay. Six here. This is guaranteed and this is done. We have not really accomplished point one so far and therefore I will not take it off. Next. Both players have scored 24 runs through sixes. Which translates to both of them have hit four sixes. Four sixes. Okay. Both the players have got exactly one penalty throughout the game and that too in the same over and in the same ball. Now see, both of them getting penalty, it would be in, I need a ball in, in some over where both the outcomes are unknown right now because I can't see a single um, presence of minus 5. The only place where it can fit is ball 3 of over 1. So there is a minus 5 here and there is a minus 5 here. Okay, so this is done. Next. Both the players have hit a hat trick of fours. That is three consecutive fours and three consecutive balls. For player one, the only slot where you can have a hat trick of fours is ball three, ball four, and ball five of over two. There is no other slot available where you can have three fours. And for player two, the only slot where you can have a hat trick of fours is ball four, ball five, and ball six of over three. So this is also taken care of. Last. The number of fours hit by player one. The number of fours hit by player one and player two in the second over is in the ratio two is to one. Okay. Now this is interesting. Look at this. Right now, for over two, the number of fours hit by player one is already three. And the ratio is being told the ratio being told to us is two is to one, which means the number of fours hit by player one has to be even. The only way it is even is. If this is also a 4. So there are 4 4s being hit by player 1 in over 2. And if this corresponds to 4, this has to correspond to 2. Player 2 has hit 2 4s. But so far he has not hit a single 4. So both the empty spots are going to be 4 only. This is done. Okay. Now we have also taken care of this. Now. <coughs> now. Now. The other thing which I can potentially work with is, see, I know that both the players have scored 24 runs through sixes. Both the players have scored 24 runs through sixes. And in the third over, player one has scored more runs than player two. Right now, player two has scored four, 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 three and one. He's already at 16. He's already at 16. Player one is at two, two, two. If he hits two sixes, he will cross 16. If he hits a 6 and a 4, he will not even cross 16. He will be equal to B. Which means, because in over 3, player 1 has scored more runs than player 2, he has to definitely hit 2 sixes here. He has to definitely hit 2 sixes here. His total in this over is 18. Now, player 2 on ball 2 of over 3, player 2 on ball 2 of over 3, his total has to be lower than that of 18 because in third over, player 1 has scored more runs than player 2. His total has to be lower than that of 18. 
So you can either score zero runs here or one run here. If he scores zero runs, he's at 16. If he scores one run, he's at 17. Okay. For over two, we have the precise calculation available. He scores 18 here. And the other fellow scores 6, 4, 1, 1. It is 12, 12 plus 10, 22. Okay. Now, also see this wonderful thing. Also see this wonderful thing. I know both the players have scored four sixes. Four sixes. For player two, no sixes in the third over. Two sixes in the second over. So the remaining two sixes have to come in the first over. So this will also be a six. And this will also be a six. So six plus one plus three plus six. Eleven runs he has scored in the... Eleven runs he has scored in the uh, first over. This is done. Now for player one. I have whatever available. Let's see. Six, six. No sixes in over two. And one six in over one. Two sixes in over three. One six in over one. So there is one more six left. There is one more six left. There is going to be a six that comes. And in the other blank, we have no other information. So can I say, can I say the score for P1 in over one? The score for P1 in over one. Right now, it is 6 plus 2 minus 5, 3. So, it can be 3 plus 6, 9, 2, 15. It can be anything from 9 to 15. Oh, sorry, sorry, not 15. I'm so sorry, it cannot be 15. It can be anything from 9 to 13. Because remember, the, he has it exactly 24 runs to 6s, so 4 6s. I will mark it with a different color. We have a six here, we have a six here, we have a six here, and there is going to be one additional six. So the maximum runs that can be scored on the additional ball is four. It can be anything from uh, zero to four. I had completely forgotten. No, zero is also possible. The list here only mentioned one, two, three, four, six, but zero is also possible because that was mentioned later. So zero to six, anything is possible. Okay. And the one time that they got out is already mentioned. So, his minimum possible score, player 1's minimum possible total in round 1 or in over 1 is going to be 9. The maximum possible total is going to be 30. Okay. No problem at all. We have gotten to the point where we have interpret everything. Let's get to individual questions. What is the number of runs scored by player 2 in the third over? Player 2 in the third over can either score 16 runs or 17 runs. Therefore, the answer should be option D. Next. What is the absolute difference between the total number of runs scored by player 1 and player 2 in the second over? Player 1 has scored 18, player 2 has scored 22. Absolute difference between them will be 4. Question 3. How many 6s are hit by player 1 in the first over? We have a 6 here on ball 4. Ball 2 could also be a 6. Ball 5 could also be a 6. But only one more 6 is coming. There are going to be only 2 6s there. Okay. Next. If both the players scored below 50 in the match, then which of the following statements could be true? Okay. Both the players scored below 50. Let's look at player 2. Player 2 has scored 11 with guarantee, 22 with guarantee, and then either 16 or 17. So his summation will either be 49 or 50. But because we are told both the players scored below 50 in the match, below 50. This is the case. So he has not scored 17 here. He has scored 16 here. Okay. Now for player one, player one, we have 18 in the third over, 18 in the second over. Now in the first, we have 9 to 13. So his total can lie in the range 45 to 49. Player one, player one's total score can be this much. Player 2's total score has to be 49. That's what. Which of the following statements could be true? Pay attention. Could be true. Not definitely true. Could be true. First statement. Player 1 has scored more runs than player 2 in the match. There is no chance. The highest score of player 1 is equivalent to the lowest possible score of player 2. So, player 1 scoring more runs than player 2 in the match is an impossible scenario. Not happening. Next. There are exactly two balls in the first over in which player 1 scored 0. Is this possible? Yes, it is very much possible. If we have one six placed here and zero a zero placed here, this is possible. So this should be a part of my answer. Next, both have scored 
equal number of runs. Yes, this is also possible. When he hits a 6 and a 4, he reaches a total of 49. And he is definitely at 49. So, both have scored equal number of runs. is possible. Player 2 has hit a 6 in every over. Regardless of what case I take, no conditions. In over 3, I know player 2 has not hit a 6. So, this is also not a part of my answer. So, the correct answer has to include statement 2 and statement 3. So, option D has to be the answer. And the final question. What is the highest possible sum of scores of both the players across the three overs? Highest possible sum of scores of both the players across the three overs. Let's see. Uh, I had identified the maximum possible score for player 2 was 50. The maximum possible score for player 1 was 49. So 50 plus 49. Answer to this question will be 99. And that is the entirety of this set. 